Maker based in Burnaby and grew up in the Lower Mainland. Um, did my college degrees at Kaplan College while living in Burnaby and then Emily Carr and UPC. The artwork I'm showing is a woodcut print uh, based on an archival photograph from 1914 and it's a multi-plate print. So I first do a drawing of the uh, image that I'm working with and then I transfer them to wooden plates. So in this case here is one of the plates here and that's the other plate there. And then I strike the plates at different times with different layers of ink to create the image. In the case of the Deer Lake 1914 print, uh, first layer is a mono print where I use the back side of the print to just paint on color and make a print from that. And then I strike a mid-ground layer and then a foreground layer. Yeah, there's three layers in total on this print. Um, the inks I use are uh, a linseed oil based ink. Uh, they're in natural uh, pigments and natural oils. So unfortunately they have no dryers in them and it takes upwards of seven days to dry. So three layers takes nearly 21 days to complete a print. Uh, Burnaby is, is now my hometown. Um, my, both my grandparents settled here and then my parents grew up here. Um, I grew up in Port Whitman but have now become a resident of Burnaby. So there's a lot of heritage for me in Burnaby, a lot of uh, roots. So. Printmaking being uh, replications or repetitions, um, there is a bit of that in the social part of my life, which is, is the imprints on my past moving forward through me and I'm leaving prints on the future. The historical photo started with um, a panoramic photo I used of my great uncle, who was an early photographer in Vancouver, who did panoramic photos of Vancouver. And I started digging into the archives of photos from his. Those, those photos I discovered in the basement of my grandma's house just up on Brent, in Brentwood. And from there I've now gone and searched for people's photos outside of my family base. So the photo I found was um, unattributed to the 1914. Yeah, there's actually been a fairly big shift in myself. Um, this piece was finished just as COVID was coming in. So it had already, because my process is so long, um, it, it was started just as everything was happening um, and it was finished without the mind yet of where we were going to. Um, but my newer works afterwards have definitely taken a shift and some I would love to share them, but uh, they're just getting out finished now. But my newer works afterwards have definitely taken a shift and some I would love to share them, but uh, they're just getting out finished now. Um, I moved into taking the idea of these plates and actually turned them into large carvings to which I do encaustic paintings on. So I've moved away from printmaking just for a bit. I'm still doing printmaking, but um, my encaustic paintings are a more recent pieces of mine. The plate is very much a sculpture, and I just pushed that further forward. Mm -hmm. And um, I was working on some endangered species pre prints before COVID. And then uh, during COVID, I uh, started carving those out to larger plates. And then I actually got into so we call encaustic painting, uh, which was this, it's been around for the centuries. The Egyptians used to do it as memorial um, burial portraits, where they paint the picture of the person, and then that that burial portrait you put with the person as they passed on um, about 1500, 2500 BC. And these paintings are still. It's wonderful today because the caustic paint flexes over time, it doesn't crack like the um, uh, oil based or now acrylic paints. Okay. I ended up doing a series of feathers regarding Icarus and how we fly a little too close sometimes, and these little pieces of ourselves are left behind. So, painting the feathers in the caustic, um, they will last for thousands of years, but once the temperature hits about 80 degrees Celsius, they melt and they disappear and gone forever.